do 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 Okay, we're live. Good. Happy Monday, hacksters. Uh, it's a little bit late because it's my birthday, but I wanted to come in and share something cool with you that we're going to be talking about a little bit more in coming days. So, uh, I have this cool kit on the desk in front of me. This is the Azure Sphere uh, IoT dev kit, which is a collaboration between uh, Avnet, Microsoft, and a couple other companies. Let's bust it open. I already cut the tape, but I promise you I haven't really opened it up yet, as evidenced by the fact that I'm doing this wrong. Oh no, I'm not doing it wrong. <laughs> it is very nicely cushioned in here. I think this is a, a little bit of a preview version. So the packaging may change a little bit based on when and where you order, but yeah, Azure Sphere MT3620. Um, yeah, the MT is because it's a MediaTek produced chip. And da -da -da. this is a kit based around a uh, very security friendly IoT solution. So I've always been banging on about how we need to focus on the security aspect of the things that we're encouraging people to build, uh, especially if you're an experienced developer, really you should be doing that. And this makes it easy to do that. You can go to avnet.me slash mt3620kit. Dash kit. <laughs> and what we get is this Element 14 community uh, talking all about this starter kit, which has a bunch of different info for you to check out, including like photographs of the uh, of the board itself, a block diagram. This is what I'm most interested in right now because it's gonna enable me to talk to you about what's on it. Uh, but yeah, some of the main interactive features of this board include the microelectronica bus that you see there uh, at the top left. Um, those two ports there are for the microelectronica click system, which is a whole system of boards that are interchangeable. Um, there's like 300 of these or something like that. Wait, 684. That's ridiculous. There's a huge amount of augmentations that you can add on to your board using these two ports. The ones that I have here are actually double relays, so you could have four relays controlled from one board really easily. All you have to do is plug them in no extra wiring or anything. Uh, so I think that makes development much, much easier. Uh, they've just got screw terminals that connect to your your little devices that you're turning on and off. It could be really nice for a home hub that's really secure. We're going to get to more about the security in a moment because that's really the focus of this board. But I want to show you some of the options that you have available. In fact, let's, let's bust this guy open uh, and actually take a look at the contents because that's what we're here for, right? <laughs> so here you have a little, uh, what is this, quick start guide? Special note. Da -da 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 -da. Includes copyrighted software. Okay, cool. Thank you for selecting this starter kit. Key steps and links are provided here to help you start developing applications. Um, yeah, so you can get the Azure Sphere SDK. It does have its own SDK that you use to program it. It's uh, pretty, you know, <laughs> customized for that. Um, you have to have it on a Windows 10 computer, uh, but ideally you have access to one of those. Um, step three, connect, uh, complete the additional steps in these instructions. So we're actually going to look at the setup guide online for this, so you don't have to even worry about reading through this card. Um, but yeah, there's all these uh, doc this documentation and these download examples that we just pulled up on the Element 14 site, as well as a handy dandy QR code for it. Uh, so we've got a, this looks like a micro USB cable, yes. Uh, for connecting it to a computer. So uh, not only does this provide power to the board, but also you can connect it to a computer to program it that way. Ooh. I've been hearing about this thing for weeks, but I've never actually seen one in person yet, so I'm very excited. Oh, cool. You've got some little standoffs here, I guess just so that it 
sits nicely on your workbench and isn't going to get all shorted out by someone like me clipping LEDs and leaving leads all over the place, which is a good thing, <laughs> as well as like little solder balls and stuff. You got a reset button, are these like user programmable buttons? They look like it, they're labeled A and B rather than like, you know, power or disaster or anything like that. <laughs> you've got your microelectronica buses here. And then you've also got a seed grove module connector. So uh, much like the microelectronica uh, modules, which are little modular guys that just plug in. And then uh, I always forget which way these go. PWM, da -da 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 ground. Okay, it goes like this. Um, not only can you plug in that whole system of interchangeable parts, but also you can plug in any number of seed grove modules. So this is another system that's very similar in, in concept. Uh, they're I squared C modules and you've got like a capacitive touch one, you've got a, a little buzzer guy, you've got a little microphone or volume sensor at least. You have light sensors and buttons and LEDs and potentiometers and stuff like that. And those are useful because you have a number of analog to digital converters on the board itself. So you can plug in all kinds of different stuff and, and run sensors that way. And this makes it really easy to just pop that little wire in there, pop it into the board on the other end. And then there's a ton of uh, software examples and things available. And there's gonna be more that uh, is gonna be published on Hackster in coming days by our new intern. <laughs> so let's take a look at, back at that diagram. Uh, we've got the clickboard ports, we've got a URP mod port, we've got, oh, two little uh, spots for adding power jumpers up here. You've got the plus or minus five volts and the VBAT. I think that's the only place that you can, you need to supply power through there if you want to use the onboard real-time clock module. Um, what do we got? An OLED display. You can hook up, a, I think, an 128 by 64 pixel OLED display. It actually says it on here. Yeah, 128 by 64. You've got a couple MEM sensors, so the onboard sensors include a three-axis accelerometer, three-axis gyro, so you can sense spin uh, as well as orientation, and you've got a temperature sensor, pressure, and bathymetric sensors, so you can detect altitude, um, ambient light, things like that, uh, USB interface, a couple of users push buttons and LEDs. Where are, oh, there we go. There's some status LEDs and a couple of user LEDs as well. And yeah, then we have the famous Azure Sphere MT3620 module itself. So over here we've got the uh, LEDs, which would like to be in focus, please. <laughs> there we go. Over here, you got your little light sensor over here. And then you've got the Azure Sphere module, which has a chip antenna built in, and then also this little antenna connector. Cool beans. On the other side, it's pretty much just a bunch of connections, so you can mount it flat on whatever, which is um, not usually desired, <laughs> hence the standoffs, but you know, you, you got flexibility. Now let's go back to some of the online information. So we've looked at the, the physical manifestation of the board now. I think it's worth diving in a little bit to its act, like how it actually works and how the whole system comes together because the board is one part of it, but there's also an OS and a cloud system involved. And you can use any cloud that you want, a public or private cloud, but it's designed to work with the Azure cloud. So uh, as I mentioned, some of the applications they recommend it for like IoT edge devices um, in particular, um, you can do predict predictive maintenance, things like that. Consumer appliances, smart retail, remote access, building and factory automation. The remote access one is interesting because there's a lot of remote administration that you can do with this board. So it's designed so that you can sort of manage everything centrally and deploy remotely to the boards that are in the field. Uh, and also issue updates that way, as well as gain information on when something might be compromised. So tons of cool stuff here. Um, 
I've linked a couple things in the description to this video, including this article from Avnet about uh, what exactly the sort of proposition is with the IoT security focus. Mm. So they list some of the uh, the tools that you have in your kit here that will help you keep your devices secure. So there's a hardware root of trust. That's really interesting. Uh, defense in depth, smart, small trusted computing based, dynamic compartments, certificate based authentication, um, failure reporting. That's part of what we just talked about with the uh, remote management and renewable security. So they talk again about the FCU, the OS and the security layers of this system. This page goes into it a little bit more. Um, Microsoft has their own Azure Sphere page. And at the bottom here, they talk about the Pl Pluton security subsystem. And that's where you really get into the sort of interesting uh, security details here, I think. But you can read all about the MCU stuff, as well as like the network connectivity is built into the chip, which has its own hardware authentication and security. Uh, the OS that runs on the module has its own sort of custom OS that you can program through the SDK with a custom Linux kernel and a security monitor. Uh, and then there's cloud security. So you've got your own sort of service there that guarantees the device's authenticity. You've got um, remote attestation on there. So it sort of identifies itself to the cloud whenever you're gonna use it. Another interesting feature of the system is that you can't transfer ownership of it ever. So even if someone gets their hands on this device, or, you know, in case you were thinking about getting one and setting it up and then selling it or giving it away, you know, it's gonna be linked to your account forever. So it's a, it's a sort of a plus and also a minus depending on what your uh, goals are. <laughs> Uh, but that perfects your devices and guarantees its authenticity and responds to threats with automatic updates of the Azure Sphere OS and uh, you get easy deployment of software updates. That's the remote management part. So they talk a lot about this Pluton system, which I think is fascinating. And there's a whole blog post on the Azure website about this that's also linked in the description. It talks about how the silicon is secured um, mm, 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 mm. yeah, this is fascinating. It does it in hardware. Uh, in silicon, it generates its own key pairs it, during the manufacturing process. Da, 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 da. It generates its keys privately in silicon and then persistently stores those keys as e-fuses. The private keys are never visible to software. Even the most trusted firmware on the device does not have access to the private keys. So yeah, it can't be compromised via software unless like someone has uh, some, some truly ridiculous stuff on their sides. <laughs> Pluton generates two different public-private elliptic curve cryptography key pairs. One is used externally. You can read this yourself. Um, but they go into the remote attestation thing as well. Um, and the chip's public keys, but not the private keys, are sent to Microsoft from the silicon manufacturer. So Microsoft knows about and established, establishes a trust rela relationship with every Azure Sphere chip, but they don't have access to its private keys. It's got a built-in random number generator. And the cool thing about this is that it detects whether or not it has enough entropy. It sort of harvests entropy from the environment, which I'm assuming comes through the sensors, uh, to generate random numbers. And then if it doesn't have enough entropy measured in those, then it just says that it refuses to deliver random numbers. Interesting. Um, then there's little cryptographic helpers, the benefits of secure boot, and then this... Uh, this information about how exactly it does the remote attestation system where it uh, authenticates it to itself to the Azure Sphere security service. Yeah, this is a really fascinating uh, article that I think is worth a read. Just, just in case you're curious about IoT security and how that's being done this day, these days. So cool. Um, oh yeah, and they're licensing Pluton royalty free to any silicon manufacturer that wants to make an Azure Sphere chip. It's not open source, but they're licensing this technology to uh, other manufacturers, which is pretty cool. 
We have the installation guide linked in the description as well. This is where you get the interesting uh, note about claiming the device. Claiming is a one-time operation that you cannot undo, even if the device is sold or transferred to another person or organization. Uh, you sign up and claim the device under an identity, but also an organization. A device can be claimed only once, uh, and then it is permanently associated with the Azure Sphere tenant, uh, which is your sort of organization. So that's pretty interesting. I'm looking forward to trying this out. I've set up a computer with the SDK so I can go through that with y'all. Uh, probably not live, because who knows what will happen, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, and I wanted to point out that there is already a Grove Starter Kit for the Azure Sphere Development Kit. As I mentioned before, the Grove system is these modules here that include, like, potentiometer, a button, all kinds of other stuff, and you can get your hands on those from the Seed website, but you can also pick up a bunch of them as the, its own kit. If you have existing Seed modules, they'll work with the Azure Sphere Kit. Uh, you don't need to go out and buy a bunch of new ones, but if you don't have that already and you want to just play around with a bunch of different prototyping options, this makes it really easy, and you can just get a whole kit from Seed Studio for $49. You can get the clickboards on microe.com slash click. And I would recommend staying tuned on the Hackster blog, because that's where we're going to be posting a bunch more stuff about this in the near future. So stay tuned. Um, I hope that you're excited about this thing as much as I am. Uh, I think, yeah, just... Just encouraging security and making that easier for people, I think is fantastic. And a lot of people, especially coming from the software world, are gonna be more familiar with the uh, Microsoft Azure system already. So like linking in with that, I think is a great next step towards getting people to embrace that. And if I were going to build more like home IoT services, I would definitely want to make sure that I was protected on as many levels as possible. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome rest of your MCU Monday. Uh, although it's basically Tuesday now. <laughs> uh, anyway, we will see you soon and hack on.